Hello guys, this is Tinra. Welcome to episode 4 of KSP Science Exploration Adventure. Here you can see I've got this pyramid-shaped vessel, which we're going to be sending to Iota, at least on a flyby around Iota, with Valentina and Bob Kerman as passengers. This vessel is using my patented system of using the stack-mounted decouplers with radial attachments. You can see I've got a total of nine engines on this lower stage. The problem with this method is it gets messy when you decouple the first stage because of the way they're intertwined. And when you shed the first stage, there's a big shift in the center of mass and the center of lift, which makes the craft unstable for a moment. That's why the second to last stage I have here is all engines that have uh, gimbal. It means that I can fire them off before I decouple so that I can get some stability going and recover after that. The problem with this is it means I can't really pitch over too much until I shed this stage because gravity will have a tendency to pull it down into my vessel. So with them intertwined like that, it's kind of a problem. I won't be using this design forever. When I get larger tanks and larger engines, I'll have central core stages that will be part of the vessel for the majority of the flight instead of having them stacked on top of each other. The center part will persist through into orbit and I'll have radially attached engines that I do shed. And you can see that I've also put this up pretty high before I started pitching over. It's mainly because it's so heavy, I want to make sure I get enough vertical lift before I stage to the final stage. And that was just a decoupler, nothing worth worrying about. But the science lab is three times, more than three times, the weight of a standard command capsule if I were doing that to bring a Kerbal up. So that, in addition to having a satellite, is a pretty big payload for these 1.25 meter engines. But I'll EVA Valentina. She can go take her place in the command seat. Let's spin around and take a look at her. She's ready to go. We'll EVA Bob. Bob's going to have to fly around. If you're not familiar with EVA movement with RCS thrusters, you just want to pulse them a little bit and change your direction piece by piece. If you hold it, you'll rocket yourself into somewhere, and then you'll have to counter that in order to actually stop and get somewhere so just pulse it as you need and moving camera makes it hard to click on what I want there we go board the command seat all right these guys look like they're pretty happy and they're ready to go so I can decouple this from my science lab and they're all set so I'll go back to my science lab I'll put this into a higher orbit so it's going slower. It'll make it easier for the Kerbals to rendezvous with it when they need to. Uh, they won't be able to go back to Gale with their current probe because they'll burn up in the atmosphere, so they need to go back into the science lab in order to return. I'll go to my apoapsis and extend it out. Uh, engines aren't firing. Um, Okay, yeah, there's no probe core on top of my science lab. I meant to put one underneath this decoupler so I could control this separately from the probe. I forgot, so this is essentially space trash and it will not go anywhere. I'll have to send something out in order to rescue these guys. Going back to my probe, you can see that the white orbit line relative to the pink line, which represents Iota, is pitched down. If I even these out so that my probe is in the same plane as Iota, it will make it a lot easier to arrange an encounter. So imagining I'm going to pitch from the center of Gale along my orbital path, I will wait until my vessel is there and then I'll aim at one of these pink maneuver nodes on the ball for the normal anti-normal. And I'll turn on my engine there in the stage view and then I'll push this up and see if I'm raising or lowering. Looks like that might be raising. Nope, that's lowering my orbit. It's a lot easier to tell when you uh, unlock flight planning because your actual orbit is blue. This is the same color as every other orbit, so it's hard to tell. But I'll level that out until it's relatively flat compared to Iota. 
I can't tell for sure without being able to target Iota and having the ascending descending node show up, which is something that happens if I get flight planning. That looks close enough. In order to arrange an encounter with Iota based off of the relative speeds from how fast I'm going now at Gale and how far out it is, if I push out with my vessel at the 4 o'clock position, with Gale being the center of where the hands are and Iota being 12 o'clock, that will probably get me encounter. It'll be pretty close. I'll be going much faster on an interior orbit, and Iota will continue moving along at pretty much the same pace it does. So I'll catch up with it. So that looks pretty close. I'll start extending my orbit now. And you'll notice that as I start extending my orbit, it goes fairly slow. But the further out I get, the faster it changes. So you'll see it starts accelerating quite a bit. I don't want to overshoot it, so I'll slow down and then slowly push it out until I cross the orbital path of Iota. And then when I change my camera view, you can see that I'm kind of high. It's because my orbital plane wasn't quite aligned with Iota. I probably should have shifted it maybe once more from the most oblique view if I orbit it around to take a look at it from another angle. But I'm not too worried about it. From here, I'll just shift back to my normal, anti-normal, pick one of these pink nodes in the maneuver node, on the uh, nav ball, I mean. And I'll just twist my orbit to bring it down closer to the orbital path of Iota. So you can see that's having the impact of lowering my orbit as well as pushing it out. That's fine, I'm not too worried about it. This could be close enough for Iota to scoop me up like a big magnet. I don't know off the top of my head what its sphere of influence is in terms of distance. I can't actually target it right now without upgrading some of my stations. That looks close, I'll lower it just a little bit more. And then I have my orbital path, as you can see, extended beyond. That's a little safety maneuver. Precaution, rather. I'll make sure that I'm getting some sun, and I'll extend my antenna so that I can travel beyond 3 million meters without losing control of this probe. And my probe won't die on the way there because it's not getting any battery charge. These guys are ready to go. I'll start sending them out. One of the new reports that I have is an EVA report because I have Kerbals. EVA, extra vehicular activity. You oogle gale, the view is fantabulous, especially with SV and Scatterer. Breaking the fourth wall there a little, those are mods that I'm using to increase visual pleasantness, adds clouds and stuff like that. We'll just start warping this up. You want to be careful with time warp because you might get impatient and pump it up really high, but you'll find it's really easy to rocket past things if you uh, don't ease into them. You can see that I'm going about 40, 450 meters a second, almost down to 400 meters a second. So I'm slowing down as I get closer to my apoapsis. Iota is moving the same speed and we should be getting closer to each other. My signal strength is going down. I don't know if that means I'll get reduced science for sending things back or not, or if that's just a warning that I'm approaching the fringes of what my current antenna can actually support. But even if I don't match with Iota initially, as I get to my apoapsis, I'll basically slow down to zero and then slowly increase again. So I have, I have a lot of headroom to be able to be captured by Iota right now. should be happening soon. There we go. It looks like I'm floating in space. It doesn't show me connected to an orbital path. That's kind of obnoxious. You can see Iota is looking lovely back there in the background. Your eyes fast on behalf of your mouth at the up-close view of Iota. The details translate well into mission logs later on. Eight science. That's a decent amount. We've got more experiments to go. Pressure data. The instrument reads zero as if it were in a vacuum. Uh, looks like these are probably going to be generic for everywhere in space. 95% science, so I'm getting some loss, but it's not that big of a deal. Temperature. Measuring the temperature of space appears to be quite impossible. This is more of the generic temperature. 
I'm assuming that at this point the temperature scans and pressure scans are going to be the same in space no matter where I am, but it's worth science, so I'll collect it. Let's see. I want to have a closer orbit to Iota. I think I have the fuel for that. I also want to make sure that my low orbit periapsis encounter for Iota isn't on the backside of the moon because I'll lose control from the space center if Iota blocks my direct connection link. It looks like this is going to be off to the side, so I don't have too much to worry about. All right, I'll just pick one of the radial nodes and I'm shifting my orbit down in the same plane that I'm already in. And I'll push it down to probably about 10,000 meters. I don't think there would be any mountains that high on a moon, just making sure I'm still not gonna lose control of my craft. But I think 10,000 should be pretty low. I'm not expending too much fuel to make this change either. 30,000. All right, that looks like it's probably pretty good. Another thing to know is you'll see I'm moving behind the body. That means that I'm gonna pick up speed as I go by it so my orbit will be larger on the way out than it was when I entered so that's kind of unfortunate if I wanted to actually slow down since I'm going to be slowing down to return anyway let's see you close enough to take a look at it now that looks a lot more interesting than moon MUN the regular moon in stock it's definitely got more features than just craters although it doesn't appear to have any craters which is also kind of interesting. You extend an arm and point at the biome, calling it out by visually familiar snacks rather than by a proper name. I, I know that Min Miss is often referred to as being made of ice cream. I don't see much food-like attributes on Iota, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Log temperature. The thermometer leaks, or maybe it drools, as do you. More food-related snack science stuff. 11.4 science. We'll send that back home. And I actually stored two experiments because I get 0.6 if I bring it home. Uh, I only need one, ex one experiment if I'm going to be transmitting everything. So in the future I can put less stuff on if I'm just going to be transmitting stuff back home for one-way missions. You can see that the surface has translated into the higher resolution terrain. It's looking a lot more interesting. You can see on the horizon of the moon more of the ridges. There's a lot of deep holes, flat areas, rolling hills. You can see there was Gale off on the horizon. There it is. So this will be fun to land on. Doesn't look like there are any cliff faces really or anything crazy like that. This is my life support. By default, Kerbals will last 15 days without supplies, which they use for uh, life support. Um, at that point, they'll go on strike. You won't be able to con use them to control vessels or do science experiments or anything like that. I'm not worried about that because I have the EVA report from here and my probe can control everything else until we get home. You can see my orbit is larger than it was because I picked up speed. I'll circle all the way back around to my apoapsis. You can see the kerbals are refusing to work. And from here, I'll lower my periapsis down into the atmosphere. I'll try doing arrow breaking, which is skimming into the atmosphere without going low enough that it will orbit, make you uh, get captured so that you can burn off some speed. I don't want to go too close though, so I'm going to raise this back up to about 70,000 meters, less than 3,000 meters into the atmosphere, and we'll see how this works out. Right now I have an apoapsis of 31,754 kilometers, so as I get into the atmosphere, about 70,000, here we go, 
you can see that my apoapsis height is dropping by about 200 meters a second. So that's good. I don't have to spend fuel to get that. And right now nothing has exploded. Still got a few hundred meters to go before I get to my periapsis. Oh, the kerbals are starting to heat up. So it's probably not a good idea to do much more than this. And I don't think I will do any more arrow breaking because I don't want to risk the lives of my kerbals. You can see though that I've decreased my apoapsis by almost 10,000 kilometers just by skimming through this part of the atmosphere. I'll turn on my engines and just slow down to start bringing down my apoapsis some more. And I'll keep the heat view on so that you guys can kind of see what's going on on the backside of Gale. That blaps us down to 37, three, three, get that a little lower, 1,200 kilometers, oh, I'm out of fuel. That, that came a lot faster than I uh, anticipated, wasn't paying attention really. Uh, periapsis is in the atmosphere. Uh... That means this is a death graph that will turn into a fireball when it gets back around to the periapsis, killing the lives of my kerbals. So, Bob, let's jettison you from your seat, turn on your RCS thrusters, and then it's kind of awkward to figure out orientation with the nav ball with a kerbal, because it's kind of based on camera view, and then when you look in the map view, I don't really... I don't know how it translates yet. So I'll position myself so that my feet are facing Gale, and then I'll burn straight upward. So I'm pushing myself away from the planet. You can see that my periapsis is increasing. I'll take that to a safe point so I can just stay in orbit safely until another craft comes to scoop me up and bring me back home. So I'll probably go to about 75,000. All right, he's safe. Let's transfer back and jettison Val. Looks like I have an EV airport left. You wish you had binoculars. It would be cool to try to spot the KSC with them. If it wasn't dark, maybe I could, but I also don't have binoculars, so it's a moot point. I'll send that science back home and then pop Val out of here. And I'll do the same thing I did with Bob. Orient myself with my feet pointing at Gale, turn on my RCS thrusters, and pulse up away from the planet. This orbit is fairly skewed, so it might be kind of obnoxious to rescue these guys. It's definitely not an equatorial one like you'd find with uh, career mode early things. Uh, I have money to upgrade my mission control so that I can get flight planning, which also requires me to upgrade the tracking station, so I'll upgrade that as well as the tracking station, which gives me better antenna range and patched conics. If you're not familiar with how the maneuver nodes work, I'll show you a quick example of those. Pop over to one of my Kerbals and drop a maneuver node on one of the orbital paths. So the green markers are prograde and retrograde. That's basically speeding up and slowing down along the direction I'm already moving in my velocity, and that will extend my orbit out or pull my orbit back based off of the position I'm at right now. The blue ones will swivel me around based off of the plane I'm currently in, and the pink ones will rotate my orbit around in a different plane. I'll buy myself some command pods so that I can pick up the Kerbals, life support tanks, and parachutes. I think that I'll probably want to get those. Better parachutes, supporting up to five tons. That sounds good. Landing gear, I would like. This stuff looks generic. Ah, there are my nose cones and procedural fairings. Those will come in handy for sure. New science experiments. It looks like there's one or two in there that I can use. I'd love to upgrade my solar panels with the dual tracking so I can always face the sun. What else is there? I've got 20 science left. 
radial decouplers. 15, 5 for the wings. I'll get better wings. And then I think that I'll just unlock the radial decouplers. All right, here's the craft that I built to rescue my kerbals. You can't see much of it because it's in a fairing, but you can see I'm using nose cones as well as the five ton parachutes. And the craft is a lot more simple than the last one that I sent up. That looks like a good place to end the episode here. So thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.